name is Heber Brown the third. All right, and what's the name of your church? Pleasant Hope Baptist Church. Michelle Gidry Jones, Trinity United Church of Christ on the south side of Chicago. Karen Rohr, Beacon, and it's a new church development. But it's an interesting question. Emily Scott, I go to church at St. Lydia's in Brooklyn. We are in the process of thinking about how we want to communicate who we are. Allison Harrington, Southside Presbyterian Church in Tucson, Arizona. Concord Baptist Church of Christ. <sighs> My name is Matt Smith, the table at Central United Methodist Church in Sacramento. I serve the United Church of Christ of La Mesa. It's my hope that one of the people around this table is going to call another one of the people around this table to say, I've got this thing, and what would you do in this situation? Because we want them more than anything to become a network. That's what the Beatitude Society Fellowship is all about, that one day these people will be out there doing great things, but they won't be doing great things as solo people. They'll be doing great things because they're part of a network of people that continue to empower them to be even greater. Because you don't get to do great ministry as an isolated lone ranger. You do it as, as being part of a community. The Beatitude Society is, is just remarkable. The Beatitudes, for me, it's, it's, a, they're a, it's a grand reversal of position, of principles, of values. Like Jesus had to be just like a little crazy too, right? One of the things that Beatitude Society has been doing that's really important for me is, is um, just validating the work and saying like this is important and you need to keep going. And a lot of times the work doesn't kind of fit into the um, the structures that the church has set up for church planting in particular, um, but the Beatitude Society kind of reinforces that I kind of need to keep going, so that's really huge. It was one of the very few opportunities that I've had to connect with clergy colleagues who are similar age, doing similar things around the country. Before I was even going to accept the fellowship, I really asked the church, is this something that you could sign on to? And they were just thrilled. They're thrilled. They always want to figure out ways that would make my leadership more effective and in turn churn the leadership. I'm so bad with metaphor sometimes. <laughs> Pot? I don't know. Just turn things so that people can learn. <clears throat> So often I feel like when I go to United Methodist or, or other denominational um, gatherings, my experience is I'm such an outlier within that, both in terms of age and what we're doing here in this space. The questions that come up for us are just not at all the same questions that many of my colleagues are addressing in their context. So for me, on, uh, it was a breath of fresh air. Worship is never the end. So we invite people into kitchen tables. So we gather to share how it is with our soul. How are we doing good and doing harm? And instead of doing that at the church, um, we do that out in coffee houses, in homes. So how many times do we hear about the Bible's view of homosexuality? When we make decisions about sex and sexuality, our primary guide is God's call to love and justice. We want this to be a community and a place that understands sexuality as a God-given gift. It's really good to connect with a group of folks that are just kind of putting a vision out there and working toward it um, in a sort of unapologetic way. <laughs> and that just feels um, like there's nothing wrong with doing that. Like why wouldn't we be acting this way? <laughs> has given me an amazing network um, of colleagues uh, that share in the passion um, for seeing a faith demonstrated in the public square. What we do has a tendency to become very isolating. Um, and so it helps to be in a room full of people who are thinking through some of the same issues and some of the same questions, but kind of thinking about things in radically different ways. So the Beatitude Society helps me with that. There's a, a whole um, line and avenue of contemplative practices that I'm being introduced to, um, being more and more comfortable in silence and solitude and uh, even the clearness committees. It's really helpful for me in a way 
uh, in a personal way so that I may go back to be a stronger uh, and more effective pastor and, uh, and preacher at Pleasant Hope. The Beatitudes remind me that strength is not necessarily where you expect it. That holiness and rightness and power are not necessarily where you're looking for it. And that uh, the small things can preach and do preach. And the small ones have voices that you might not have heard initially, but you will hear eventually. Um, and it is a reminder that um, everything that has been silenced will one day be shouted from the rooftops. Um, that we're all here um, in these kingdoms together, um, but they, they, that God is calling us to a different sort of kingdom living, uh, more of the you know beatitude sort of community living. And so I believe that politics just means how do we look at these issues as the body of Christ. When the specter of race and segregation made Tucson and much of the nation into a place of hostility and violence against people of color, Southside was a congregation that carried its faith out into the streets with picket signs demanding an end to segregation. And then when Central American refugees began to stream across our border looking for asylum, Southside once again opened their doors and their hearts to those who were on the outside of the outside. I, I did not know that American churches could, in fact, operate as sanctuaries in this way over and against deportation rules. Yeah, I hope other churches will respond in the way that we have responded, so that it's not just one starfish being thrown back into the sea, but that we're responding to, to scriptures that call us to care for the widow and the orphan. And, and we're saying we actually need to act sooner than that and prevent our broken immigration system from creating widows and orphans all throughout our communities. Sometimes I get so caught up in what I feel like I should be doing, and this is the work I should be doing, and this is the need, and this is this is where the community feels drawn and then realizing well where am I in this work and wanting always to bring who I am to what I'm doing and that's what the Beatitude Society is giving us this gift of like you you've got something and you've got something to say and you have the characteristics and the qualities of really bringing about change and follow that follow what you're hearing inside of yourself Thank you.